What is up guys, I am Get Flanked, and today we're going to talk about roaming, specifically how to roam against good players, against good teams. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, what I'm going to talk about in this video has been the hardest lesson that I've had to learn as a Siege player. The entire time that I've been playing Siege, this is the hardest thing for me to learn. It's something that I'm still working on every single day, and I know that there is a lot of you guys out there who fall into the same mistakes I do, and I think this video is really going to help you, particularly if you're somebody who likes to roam. And let me tell you what I'm talking about here, okay? Because what we're going to talk about in this video is, is difficult for me because it goes against my natural instinct as a player, okay? And as a roamer, what I like to do is I like to use the element of surprise to win gunfights for me. I want to go and put myself in a position as a rumor at the beginning of the round where they're not going to know where I am and I want to allow them to get comfortable in the map and then come up and flank them. Literally, my name is Get Flanked. This is how I want to play. I want them to never know where I am and I want to use that element of surprise to get easy kills. But here's the problem with that, guys. It doesn't work against good players. It doesn't. Because good players are going to drone you out as a roamer. And if you're relying on the element of surprise in order for you to do a good job as a roamer, if you're relying on the element of surprise in order to get kills, if you can't handle winning gunfights when the enemy knows exactly where you are, then you need to stop roaming or you need to improve in that area. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Now, before we get into the first gameplay clip, I want to go over what my target audience is here, who I'm really trying to help with this video. And I think it's designed to help anybody who's, you know, low plat and below. Uh, I've noticed that in gold and below, you can kind of pull off those deep rooms where you go and hide at the beginning of the round and then you wait to pull off those flanks. Those will work in gold and below a lot. But once you start getting into plat, you're going to start playing against five stack teams that are going to drone better. And that's when you're going to have to start thinking about changing your roaming style here. And that's what I'm really focusing on is, is helping people who are, who are trying to get to that level in this video. Okay, getting into the first gameplay clip we're going to go over here. And we're defending the locker's objective on bank. And this is what not to do. This is me doing a really awful job as a roamer. This is the instinct that I'm trying to fight against. This is the part of my game that I'm trying to fix and change. This is the hard lesson that I've learned. And I know a lot of you guys have this same mindset. So hopefully this will help you recognize when you're doing this and stop it. But okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to roam here. I'm going to play as Jaeger. And what you're going to see me do is once the round starts here, I'm going to go into what I call my deep dark corner. I'm going to go somewhere on the map where I'm going to try to catch them off guard. But you can see here, I'm putting myself in an absolutely awful position. Okay. And if I succeed in this, if I have a good round, it's because the enemy is not very good. Okay. And that's, that's the whole concept here. Me putting myself in this position, it may work sometimes, but when it does, it's because the enemy didn't do a good job. And that's the habit I'm trying to break. Okay, guys, if you find yourself using play styles and making decisions that relies upon the enemy to play poorly in order for you to have success, then you need to change that because it's only going to take you so far. The hard truth is that me in this position, if I get droned out, I'm dead. There's windows all around me. I'm in an awful position. They don't have to do anything special. If they drone me out, I'm dead, okay? And here's the other thing, that as a rumor right here, I'm doing literally nothing to help my team, okay? I'm giving the other enemy team full map control. I'm resisting them none whatsoever, okay? I'm not making their life difficult in any way, shape, or form right now. I'm literally just sitting here on the edge of the map waiting for somebody to make a bad play and hoping that I can take advantage of it. And that's the wrong mindset. Because as I'm doing this right now, the enemy is taking complete map control. They're pushing the objective. Now that they start killing my teammates because I didn't help my team at all, I decided to start moving, but it's too late. At this point, the enemy already has full sight control. In a second, you're going to see them plant the diffuser as I'm trying to go in and retake sight control. And you can just see that they've already planted the diffuser right there. Now they're going to set up their angles. And I'm just going to die to an easy you know, angle hold here because I let them get complete sight control and play that round horrible. That's the epitome right there of what I'm talking about. It's kind of an extreme example. 
But the general mindset that I wanted to demonstrate there is I, as a rumor, went to some deep, dark corner to try to take advantage of a bad play on the enemy. The enemy didn't make a bad play, and therefore, I was completely ineffective. Not only was I ineffective, I actually just let them take complete map control and offered zero resistance in doing that. Now, in the background right now is a clip of me doing the exact same thing again. The only difference is this time it's going to work. And I use that word work loosely. I end up getting three kills. I end up winning the round. And that's why this lesson is so hard to learn because at times this does work and you get rewarded. And when this happens, you feel really clever. And in your head, you're thinking, well, I'm going to do that again. That worked. But look at what this entire round relied on okay in just a second you're going to see a drone come through the front door and the drone doesn't look my direction so this entire round relied upon this habana right here that comes in in just a second to not drone well and when you put yourself in these positions where your success relies upon the enemy to play poorly you're going to lose more than you win once you start playing against enemies who don't make those big mistakes now, as this round moves along, you're going to see proof that I'm playing against an enemy that I don't want to say that's a bad player, but they just don't play this well. And here's the thing to keep in mind that even though that front door example went as good as it could, I, I didn't get drained out and I got the kill. I'm still in a 1v2 against a Monty and a Finca and they have full sight control. There's no possible way I should win this round. Because me as a roamer, I let them have full sight control. Even though I got that kill, I still didn't resist them enough to where they, they still got full sight control with a Monty. There's no possible way I should win this round. But they don't play it well. Because, again, I'm playing against the type of players who are making mistakes. But unless you only want to be able to beat players like this, you've got to recognize that even though I was rewarded for this play style in this round, it's not the way that I should continue to play. So there's a couple clips of me showing you what not to do. Let's go over a clip now where I feel like I do a much better job as a roamer. This is the type of roam right now that I'm trying to work on doing more consistently because I feel like this room, it doesn't rely on the enemy to make mistakes. This, this room relies on my skill. I'm under control. I'm in control of whether or not I win and succeed in this room. And in this room, my mindset right now is I want to resist. We're defending hookah on coastline. I know a lot of people try to set up a foothold when they're attacking this objective in penthouse VIP and come from that side. So I'm just trying to resist. If they try to breach over here, I'm listening for calls from my teammates. If they call them, you know, entering the map on the other side, I'll try to rotate over to them. I'm trying to delay time. I'm trying to resist. I'm trying to make the enemy team uncomfortable. I'm not trying to hide in some deep, dark corner. Now, here in just a second... You're going to see a drone comes in from the VIP balcony right there, and we're going to freeze it. My mindset right now, natural mindset as a player is to run. Go somewhere where I can hide. Okay, They know where I'm at right now. They're making call out based on that. My mindset is normally I want to go hide somewhere so that I can get off their radar and then come back and surprise them. But that's a mistake. Okay, I don't want to give them penthouse, VIP, Hall of Fame control. I don't want... To, to let them have a, a foothold in this map. I want to resist the entire time and make them uncomfortable. And that's what you're going to see me do in this clip. Instead of running, I'm going to go and set up a little kill hole here and try to give myself an advantage in this gunfight. And that's what you have to do. So here in just a second, you're going to see the Thermite comes in and peeks me. He puts a couple bullets on me, but I end up getting the headshot and I get the kill. So there you go. Instead of running and letting them have map control there, I actually pick up a kill. Now, I'm not done yet. I'm going to keep resisting right here because I kept hearing sounds around me. So I'm just going to go and try to put myself in another position that's going to make them uh, make it very difficult to kill me and maybe put myself in an advantage. And this is what a good rumor does and, and knows is how to pick up angles and stuff like this. It's going to give them an advantage in an upcoming gunfight. I'm not running away. I'm resisting. And so again, they're going to try to keep pushing me here. Um, you're going to see a player peeks this doorway in just a second. I get it down. And I make a mistake here. I get kind of greedy. I go after it. As I do, I hear them uh, over to the right. I pick up that kill on Ash. So there we go. I died. Okay, I'm not saying I played that situation perfect by any means, okay? I got that down there. I got greedy. I ran after it. I probably shouldn't have. Or maybe I would have gotten the other two kills there as well. But I took, I killed two players. I put another player down to 50 health. I made great callouts to my teams. There's only a minute left in the round now. 
uh, and we know where two of the enemies are, uh, because I can call that out, that's a much better job as a roamer. And the decision there is once I got droned out, I didn't run and hide. I said, no, I'm going to resist. If you want to kill me, come and get it. And that's the mindset you need to have as a roamer. And if you're not comfortable in playing as a roamer when the enemy knows exactly where you are and still resisting them and still being able to take one or two with you and waste time, then one of two things, you either need to work on roaming and, and work on that aspect of roaming or you need to stop roaming. Now, I don't want you guys to get confused here and think that I'm saying that if you're not good enough, don't roam. That's not at all what I'm saying. It's more about a mindset. If you don't feel comfortable getting and winning head-to-head gunfights, that's an aspect of your game that you need to work on. There's two gunfights right there. Again, I'm not saying I play that perfectly in that round, but I tried to do something to give myself a little bit of an edge. The first was setting up that kill hole to try to give me an advantage if he peeked that doorway. The second was getting behind that cover and putting myself in a position where he wasn't going to spot me really easy. You know, I'm not just standing there in that doorway looking at him. I made it difficult for him to kill me. And if, if you don't have that aspect of your game, then you need to work on that. That way you don't rely on hide and go seek when you're roaming. Now, I also don't want you guys to think that you always need to be seeking out confrontation as a roamer. I'm not saying that either. You got to find that balance. And of course, if the enemy doesn't know where you are as a roamer, that's a good thing. What I'm saying is that you don't want to put yourself in an awful position in order to try to get that element of surprise. And that's what I found myself doing a lot as a player. I would you know, put myself in seriously compromising positions just to try to get that element of surprise. And that just it's not going to work guys that's what you got to get away from now i do realize that this video focuses more on what not to do than what to do the reason for that is because i just really want to get you guys out of those deep dark corners and start pushing the action and when you do you're going to get experience every single time you're going to learn little tricks like setting up that kill hole or using a skinny angle and how to win those head-to-head gunfights, but that's stuff you got to kind of learn on your own. There's really nothing I can put in a video that's going to help you guys in that situation. You just got to get your gun skill up and learn those little tricks as you go. I'm really interested to see what you guys think about this. Again, get out of those deep, dark corners, start pushing the action as a roamer, and start uh, you know, resisting. That's the big thing here, guys. If you guys enjoy this, please make sure that you like and subscribe, and I'll have more coming your way here soon.